Hi, I'm Spencer Tinkum from Norfolk, Virginia. You may be surprised that Calaptus erratus erratus began as an experiment. If you were to tell me that it would eventually end up in a museum, I would have thought you were crazy. I would have said, no, it'll probably end up being firewood and used to heat the house during the winter time. I call this body of work macro sculptures, similar to macro photography but in sculptural form. I think of these pieces as realism to the point of abstraction. I gathered the wood to make this piece from the back of a dusty concrete plant in Virginia Beach, Virginia. The first step was power washing the blocks of wood. Once they were dry, I squared them up, glued them up, and then cut them into a circle. All right, let's get to the fun part, and that's when we get to use the big tools. I draw some loose guidelines on the top of the circle and then begin roughing it out with a gouge. Initially, it weighed around 15 pounds. By the time I was finished roughing it out, it weighed less than 10. Boy, are these next steps tedious. After roughing it out, I draw each feather barb in with a pencil. You're looking at hundreds, sometimes even thousands of lines. I carve all of the feather detail in with a box cutter. It takes at least three to four different cuts to relief each feather barb. This step alone can take days or even weeks. Just when the carpal tunnel starts to set in, it's time to sand each and every groove. The next step is to seal the wood, and then I apply a few thin layers of gesso. The next step is one of the scariest, is painting the base coats. Because I'll be shading and shadowing later, I have to paint this very bright and very bold. Because I paint in oil, I usually spend the next two or three days worrying about whether or not the colors are too bright as they dry. With a liner brush, I come back and shade each and every barb. If I'm lucky, about halfway through this step of the painting process, I can breathe a sigh of relief. Once the piece is completed, I sign the work, carving Tink on the back. I title the work by the Linnaean name, Calaptus Erratus Erratus, and I draw the specimen label. Last but not least, I add a French cleat. I briefly hang it up in my studio, listen to some music, drink some iced tea, and think, wow, it's amazing this thing didn't turn out as firewood.